Welcome back to my podcast. My name is Mrs. JBJ. I'm talking about all things black entertainment with reality TV twist. So welcome, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mrs. JBJ. We are reviewing Toya and Regine reality show. And we are on episode five and it's called Secrets and Games. Let's have a little chat before I review this episode. Let me sip some water. Okay, so, so far, how are you guys feeling about Toya and Regine? I'm not, I'm holding on. I promise you guys that I was gonna come and do these reviews. I'm holding on only because I've been watching Regine and Toya for like a really long time. And I just don't feel like I'm getting anything different. I mean, they now all have their own YouTube channel. All of them from, I think everybody. Miss Nita, of course, Regine, Toya, Beatty. What's that dude name? Casey, oh my God, how can I forget Casey's name? Casey, everyone has a YouTube channel, so it's really hard for me to come on their reality show and, you know, tune in every week. I mean, so far it's been okay. Like I said, I've been rating it between a five and seven. Episode four was good um, because that's really what we've been waiting for um, to really figure out what was going on with Regine and Armand relationship. And we finally got some answers. But like I said, I feel like that they're holding back a lot on these episodes. We're getting like half answers. It's just like clipped in type of deal. Like I just don't feel like it's as authentic as it can be. Especially when it comes down to Regine and Toya. And unfortunately, I think they're going to have to give more. Because they have a YouTube channel. So they let us in on mostly their like basic everyday life things that's going on with them. So I think for this reality show. Not to say that everything don't have to be drama. But I ain't going to lie y'all. I do watch reality TV for the entertainment. <laughs> you know, I don't want to see anything really basic on reality TV. I'm just being honest. And you guys can just say, well, you, it's their business. No, nope. when you sign those we contract, Bravo contract, we want to be entertained. Yes, it's called television. Well, I did see that I think we're coming up to the finale. So we're not getting a lot of episodes, maybe six, seven episodes, maybe. Because I did definitely see somewhere that they're gearing up for their finale. So I don't know so far, uh, but let's get into it. I'm not going to hold you up. You come to know about the recap of Toya and Regine. So let's get it started. Like I said, this is episode five and it's called Secrets and Games. Start this episode off with Toya. She's going to one of her hosting events. Also, she's showing all her products and services. She said this is a good way for her to take a break and get away with everything that uh, Janae told her about moving to LA because you remember on the previous episode she was kind of upset because Regine said that she wanted to move to Los Angeles so this is where this episode picks up at she has a hosting event with all her products and services Danielle meets her there Red meets her there so with this they're just going through meeting their fans selling their products um, one highlight of this event was that one of the fans wanted to speak to Toya personally, like share one of her personal experience and was just letting her know she has a young child and how social media and how they love to tell their business and they need to advocate more as parents to let them know that some things you need to keep private. That was really the only thing that was kind of like... I guess a personal touch in this the episode but not much going on like i said she's at a hosting event then we go straight into regine so regine goes to la to a little wayne concert she's there with the omg girls means oni beja all of them are there they're hanging out 
Regine is letting them know that she finally told her mom that she's moving to LA and her mom was emotional about it but she feel like this is the best thing for her to do going forward and of course the OMG girl supported her and let her know they'll be there for her so really not much and like I said some of this stuff Regine has already told us in her YouTube video but I'm being positive so that was part of that particular episode and then we go into of course my favorite couple Red and Toya um, have a date night I love Red and Toya I love the way that and when you see people couples having date nights and being intentional about it that's that's required in marriage marriage takes a lot of work in communication so i love they bring us in on their date night so they just go in talk about you know what's going on in their lives and their goals and aspirations and then they talk about I guess they used to have like couple nights where they hang out with couples and have games and different things like that. And Toya want to bring that back so they can hang out with their friends. So she didn't want to invite Casey. Um, Red asked her that she want to invite Casey. She said no. I don't know what's the deal. I know Toya done told us her side about it. But I'm like what does Casey really do? I want to know. I want to get into it. Like, what is really going on? That may be a good part of your episodes. L deep dive in that to a little bit. Because I want to be on your side with Casey. But like I said, every time he shows up on screen, he's funny. He's, but you know, but I understand that's her story. I would just let, let us in so we can empathize with what you and Casey going through. Janae and Armand, she wouldn't be inviting them because of course they broke up. We all know that. And then they talk about BD and her new boyfriend, Rick. Um, so she is going to invite them and then their other friends that they usually invite to the couple game night. Fred asks Toya about having a baby. He wants another baby, probably a son. She, you know, like, no, you know, we have too much going on. I don't think this is the best timing to have a baby. Boy, you look at Red and ask him to put his hands up. Put your hands up, Red. She noticed that he was not wearing his wedding ring. She knows something is going on with his wedding ring. And then, of course, Red deflects. And he goes over to Toya and she sits in his lap. So they just have their little special moment ending their date night on a good note. We like that. Fred meeting up with Dewan. That is Danielle's husband. They meet up. They play golf. And Red just lets him know, hey, man, I want a baby. She ain't feeling it. The one kind of keep it real with him. If a woman says she's not feeling it, she ain't want, she don't want no more kids. So he was like, he's not going to give up. He wants another child. And then they talk about this ring. So Red lets him know, hey, man, guess what? He just comes out and tell him immediately, man, I lost my ring. <laughs> I lost my wedding ring. I told her I didn't want to wear no ring. And look what happened. So now we know what happened with Red. He lost his wedding ring. So they talk about that. So the one was like, we don't know what to do. Let's call Danielle. They called Danielle. Let Danielle know Red lost his ring. She was just like, be up front. Let her know that you lost it. You already ordered it. It's on its way. So that was pretty much everything to do with that. So Toya, Rain, and Regine meets up having their mother and daughter day out. They talk about Rain recently graduating from probably preschool to kindergarten. They just have a little conversation about Regine moving to LA and how Toya is sad about it. I think she's more sad because she wants Rain and Regina to have a close relationship. She said it's very similar to her and Beatty. They like a 10 year difference. And she's concerned because her relationship. But I don't think she need to be concerned about that. Everyone's situation is different. 
I mean, of course, Toya and Beatty, they grew up different. They grew up in, of course, two households. Of course, Regina has her own, but there was a lot of conflict, a lot of trauma. Their mother was going through abuse. So it's just different. So I think she should give herself a little grace and, you know, just trust the process that, you know, they going to have a loving relationship. I see them having a loving relationship, but I understand her concerns. So she just talks about that. Regina lets her know, hey about her going to LA, visiting her dad, going to the concert, and really gearing up to move to LA. But what I found kind of weird about Regine, she said, I'm so ready to move due to my circumstances. Your circumstances? Isn't Armand your circumstances? And isn't Armand going to LA too? Like, I know LA is big. I get it. First of all, I understand that LA is big. I get it. I live in a major city. Most time, when family, friends live in the city you live in, if you don't call them up, yeah, sometimes you don't meet them. But I'm talking about if you in a relationship with each other or used to be in a relationship with each other, you know you're checking out their Instagram. You're checking out their, what their, their activity on social media. You in LA. You're not going to get away from Armand. But okay. Um, I don't know why she keeps saying, I need to get away from my circumstances. But you're moving to LA where Armand is? I get it. Okay, so they talked about that and her really wanting to get away. Pretty clear cut. Nothing special regarding this. And then BD meets up with her boyfriend named Ricky. They just talk about their relationship and... You know, just having a date night. I think he lives in Louisiana, um, but seemed like they've been dating for a while. He was aware of her situation with Mel. And he asked her clear and up front, like, Beatty, are you over Mel? And she said she was honest with him. She said she thinks about her and everything like that. Obviously, she loved her. But, hey, it didn't work out. Yes, I'm over it. I'm ready to move on. So that was pretty much with Beatty and her boyfriend, Ricky. And then we go into Toya. She actually is in her car. She wants to talk to Casey. She's trying to make it right with him. So it just shows Casey and Toya talking about they want to meet up. She has something special for him. And he's excited about it. So they schedule for them to have a meet up. Danielle so Danielle is babysitting rain and that was a kind of cool moment because we know her and Toya are really close so to see rain hanging out with her son always a cool moment so Toya comes and pick up rain and then her and Danielle have their one-on-one -on -one together where they talk about red of course what's going on with his wedding ring they also talked about her having another baby and she's saying she's not ready and she told him that she wasn't ready something i guess we'll figure out more in the upcoming episode but she did say that it's more than her just not wanting to have a baby that she's more concerned about a health scare or a health issue so i guess we'll figure out i hope everything is okay with that and she said she hadn't discussed it with anyone not danielle not red no one knows what's going on with that but since she exposed it on camera on her reality show i'm pretty sure we'll figure out what's going on with that but i hope everything is okay she also talked about uh, she knows something going on with the ring, but Red is not giving it up. So they talked about that. She also talked about, you know, finally getting Nita to go to the doctor. Nita agreeing that she was going to go ahead and take care of that. She talked about her relationship with BD, them working on it. She feel like she has kind of met up with everyone and trying to smooth everything over and have a talk with everyone except Casey. She said Casey is the only person that she has not met up with and want to have a talk with him. She just figured out that that's fair. And I feel like she's going to have to have a talk with him anyway because once he finds out that she didn't invite him to the couple's night and you know Casey got a whole girlfriend. So he's going to feel some type of way. And they got the camera running. He wanted to be part of that. Trust me. So he's not going to be. So I'm glad she scheduled a um, meet up. So she's just talking about hey. I'm going to give him a studio section. I want him to know that I do support his career. I'm just going to do this and be done with it. And then Danielle give her the side eye like, 
Mm, girl, I hope that work out for you because you always giving and giving and giving. But at the end of the day, he's still coming for you. Your relationship, y'all still will be mad with each other. He'll still block you. Um, but she was like, you know, I'm just going to do what I need to do. So that's pretty much what happened with that scene. So Toya finally meets up with Casey at the studio. He's waiting in the car. Talking about where this girl at. It's been almost an hour. So they finally meet up. Of course, they end up meeting at the studio. That was her surprise. Of course, Casey gets out of the car all hyped up. You could tell like he's genuinely excited about being at the studio. And then once they walk in, he see a producer. Seem like he's excited for that particular producer. And then they just go right into him going into the studio. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. That song sounds really dope. For real, for real. Like, hands down. If I can find, a, like, a Apple Music or a Spotify link, I'll put it in my description. We always want to support people, right? So, the song sounds really good. And then, of course, once he records his song, Toya is excited. They are both excited. He's excited recording it. And then they have their one-on-one -on -one meeting with each other. And it kind of felt like, do y'all think that Toya had to like possibly even have this recording session with Casey in order to even get to this conversation? You know how you have to like give certain people things to get things out of them or, or have, I don't agree with that method. We either going to, you're either going to respect me. We're going to be able to talk. But I'm definitely. It felt like a little bribe. Let me give you something you've been begging for. So I can get you to act right. That's what it sounded like to me. That's where she was coming from. But let me know what y'all think. Put it in the comments. So they have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. She just let him know. First of all she understand. Like his circumstances. His mindset. Um, but it's just not working for her anymore. She's not getting anything out of it. She's stressed out. It's mean. It's malicious. Like I said, I wish they go into more details. I want to be on your side, Toya, but these half-assed storylines, I can't. Like, what is he saying? And then the thing is, when you tell your story and be authentic with it, especially on reality TV, you're healing other people. Other people, you're not the only person that have this type of circumstances, but us sharing our experiences, right? You don't know who out there experience the same thing and you can give them a little hope or a little blessing or how to speak to my family member if this going on so i just wish he stopped with the half storylines i mean just tell us what yeah i want to be nosy of course it's reality tv but i want to be compassionate when i feel you like expressing yourself to casey i want to be on your side with it but i don't shit i don't know what's going on with that so she just let him know that you know what i'm saying she she has to focus on her family she can't take it anymore it's interrupting her peace and they gonna have to figure it out and stop and really let him know like stop feeling like somebody owe you something we don't owe you anything of course we're gonna support you and we're gonna love on you but when things don't work out then don't take it out on your family members, right? So that's basically what she was telling him. And I guess because he was in the studio, he was in a happy mood. You know, he heard her out and he also asked her, I'm going to give him credit for this. He asked her, well, what can what can I do to make our relationship better? You know, what? what how can I be a better person? I do like that that he did mention that but like i said it definitely feels like she has to do this type of things to even have a a real conversation with her brother but you know that's family you know everybody go through that they talk about that it seemed like they had a good solid conversation i'm hoping everything works out for them in the future all right, couple night is happening. Everyone is arriving at the home. It seemed like Toya hasn't gotten there yet. You see, oh, we saw Rashida and Kurt. Always good to see them. We saw Danielle and her husband. A lot of other couples. And, of course, Beatty and Ricky came in matching, looking like twins. Um, But it seemed like they were having fun. Everyone was in a good mood. Toya done got Nurse Keisha to bring a sexual enhancement drip like girl okay okay i see y'all i see y'all so they talk about the sexual enhancement drip 
okay so she had that for the couple um if they want to engage in that so it starts off with the couple games and danielle of course is asking bd and ricky about their relationship and their threesomes and how does that work and is her girl your girl and they were real honest about it. I'm telling you, that's why I like Beatty. That's what makes good. She's boring, right? Beatty, oh, well, not boring. But Beatty is just being herself. But she's not like a, she don't have a huge personality at all. Like Toya um, or Regine. She's really, really a laid back chick. So I don't expect a lot. But I do like when she show up, she uh, authentically being herself. And that makes for good TV. And I love it. So she was real honest about it. He was honest about it. Everyone had a good time with them asking the couple's question. And then, of course, you go into Red and Toya. So Toya asks about the ring. We back to the ring. She knows something is going on with the ring. And so they asked about how important it is to wear your ring. She said it was important, especially when you in a newly relationship. I felt like all the men in the room threw him right up under the bus, Red. They all threw you on the bus because they was like, I wear my ring. I wear my ring. Everybody throwing up their rings. That's important. Throw up your rings. And then, of course, they asked Red to throw up his ring. And he says, I just left the gym. I ain't got no ring. Toya gets mad. She disappointed. She can't take it no more. He really has to let her know what's going on. So that was really the end of the episode. <sighs> let me drink some water, y'all. How do I feel about Toya and Regine? Uh, and what score are we giving them for this episode? I want to like them. I do. I like them. I just want more. Uh, I want more. I want more. It it just felt so... It wasn't... Yeah, y'all, we want a little more entertainment, a little more drama. And I think it's there. Trust me, they got drama. I just feel like they're choosing what they want to tell and what they don't want to tell and i understand i get it i get it but it don't work for reality tv but i'm gonna digress because i think i have at least two to three more episodes to review with them if they get a season two i don't know so how would i rate it and also you guys why i'm being a little hard on them is because they got youtube channels every last one of them have youtube channels so that's the only reason why I'm like, I can't watch a YouTube channel and your show. And they're basically the same. That's the only reason I'm saying that. No other reason. So let's go ahead and score it. So what what you guys think? You guys are not letting me know how you feel about Toy and Regina. I really need you to drop it down there. Now, I was trying to be on the low and pop my shit on the low. But I had to get on camera and do my review. So, hey, if I'm going to be on camera, you're going to have to help me out here. So, I said that I'm going to give them a six for this episode. I think that's fair. A six. A six. I love Toya and Red's relationship. I do. I do. But they're happy. They're in love. They're figuring it out. It's just not entertaining. Um, Regine, we don't, we ain't even really see Regine on this show. And you know she doing her shit in L.A. We ain't get nothing. What's those side conversations with you and Armand? Are y'all done? Can we have a girls night to, to figure out what the fuck he really did? Especially the previous episode where y'all like dropping hints that he broke in your house. And y'all can't give us more? Okay. I digress. Um, BD, I think she's giving us what she can. But I'm going to stay with a six, guys. If you like it, you disagree, you agree, just let me know. But thank you for joining me. I appreciate you for tuning in, coming in, watching my videos. Like I said, I do have other contents on my channel. I also have podcasts. So, yeah, check me out. Like and subscribe.